Okay, I think that's that's a good topic, living mastery. And because uh, I think it's relevant, a lot of us are dealing with questions relating to money, issues relating to relationships and physical health, emotional health, mental health, spiritual health. I think all of these things fit in, they fit quite well under this idea of living mastery and what does living mastery constitute like what what is is it even possible as a not just as a concept but as a living reality and also how does living mastery relate or is it related to this idea of holistic health and what is holistic health because when we think of health we usually think of it in physical terms right and uh, these days we've made an advance in terms of that because we, we do think of mental health also. It's no longer necessarily an embarrassing subject. But it used to be for a long time, right? 40, 50 years ago, what did they used to do with people who showed some symptoms of being unstable in the mind? They used to just lock them up or just do all sorts of treatments on them, lobotomies and what have you. I mean, that's, we don't do that anymore. So we do consider health to include mental health. Emotional health too, that's huge. I mean, in the days of our forefathers, emotional health was hardly considered. We were very stoic. Our, our forefathers were stoic people. They didn't necessarily talk about their feelings. They didn't express emotional disturbances you just sort of kept an upper what's the english expression keep an upper stiff lip or whatever it is or you know but today we do consider all of these things and we even talk about spiritual health too so when we think of holistic health we're including all of these things and physical health needs to be included emotional health needs to be included mental health and spiritual health all of these play an important role in the idea of holistic health. And when we look at the word holistic health, which comes from the root word to be whole, you know, so it must include all of this, all of these things that we're referring to. And the question of holistic health and how it relates to living mastery, because can there be living mastery without holistic health? Right, so we can say holistic health, practical holistic health, can say the application of holistic health because living mastery is the application of holistic health living mastery is holistic health in practice okay so we see that they're indeed correlated they're they're important they're related to one another then when we talk about living mastery then we say well living mastery how where and what and that's where astrology is so interesting for me in terms of the horoscope, this you know, three-dimensional graphic uh, visual representation of the relationship between interstellar life, planetary reality, and you know, reality on planet Earth. What's the relationship between these? And specifically, the zodiac or the horoscope shows 12 particular living departments where this relationship takes place so when we talk about living mastery it's related to these 12 facets of a human of human experience so we're talking about holistic health which must include physical health emotional health mental health spiritual health and then we need to talk about the practical application of holistic health and that we are calling living mastery so the practical application of holistic health constitutes living mastery, which must take place, must happen in the everyday reality that you and I have to negotiate. And it's a reality which astrology divides into 12 living departments. The first house, for example, these are called 12 houses. This is where the action of the planets through the signs take place in the 12 houses. 12 life departments. So the first house, for example, is the house of self. The second house is my finances. 
my money, you know, my values, my standard. The, the third house is about my emotion, uh, mental health, my ability to communicate, to translate the abstract or spiritual impulses into thought forms that I can communicate to you. That's what the third house is about. The fourth house is about my emotional health, my childhood. The fifth house is about my creativity, children and all that sort of stuff. The sixth house is about my, my health and service. The seventh house, my relationships and so on. So you can see that the 12 houses, they represent 12 facets of human experience wherein my living mastery takes place. And living mastery is correlated with the idea of holistic health, which must include physical health, emotional health, mental health, and spiritual health. So we see how all of these things are related. Now, to give some background about this, why this idea is important for us to talk about, is because we could see that man is suffering, man is struggling. When I say man, I mean the human. Now, are we struggling individually and collectively because it's uh, it's natural for us to struggle you know it's that's we're condemned to suffer in that way or is it something actually happened to us which causes us to be distorted in some way which inevitably filters down into the way we live so instead of living mastery then we have living uh, abuse or whatever whatever we we call our we're just basically uh, treading water. Most of us are treading water. Most of us, our physicality, the first house is you know, our sense of self, our self-esteem is poor. Uh, financially, we're struggling, most majority of people. Mentally, we, 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 our mind is wayward all over the place. We think by habit, not, by, not on purpose. Emotionally, we, we struggle. And we're not afraid of reality. It is said we are afraid of our feelings. Uh, creatively, you can hardly call our life creatively mad, perhaps. And so on and so forth. So it's, but that's where this action is taking place. Instead of living mastery, we've got the opposite of that. But the question is, is this natural? Or, this something, or does something happen to us? Uh, we can approach this question in a couple of different ways. First of all, does any other creature suffer in the way we do? We can't see it. We can't, we can't find the other examples of this anywhere in nature. Right? Yes, animals experience pain, but they don't suffer the consequence of their pain. They don't think about it the way we do. You know, we experience an event once, but mentally we keep going over it a thousand times. And we really cause ourselves to suffer way and beyond the event itself, way past its user date, something that happened to us as children. We still suffer in it today. A cat has a fight with another cat and then move off. They shake it off and, you know, and that's like, what's that saying? Like a water off a, off a duck's back, just... Not, with, not so with you and I. Now, is it intended to be that way? And, and I've, for me, I'm, I struggle with this question because I don't see it as a natural byproduct of being human. Uh, I see it as a distortion of our humanity. I see suffering, not pain. I see suffering as a, as a, as a distortion of human nature. The question is what happened? And as a way of entering into this question, which must eventually lead to the idea of holistic health and living mastery, because we are talking about that. How can I achieve a level of living mastery in my life? How can I you know, not merely feel like I'm treading water, but that I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing well? And uh, if that's intended for us, we don't know yet, but let's, let's have a look at this. You know, we, we say we blame the events of our life. We, we blame the evils of our world, so to speak, individually and collectively. 
And by evil, by the way, we're only meaning that that which gets in the way of my happiness. That's what evil is. It serves to misguide me and delude me in some way. It gets in the way of whatever I consider to be my fulfillment. Now, we blame the ills of our world, all the things that are going on, apparently. We blame them on our lack of intelligence or on our emotions, on the way we think individually, collectively, on the way we behave. We blame it on the government. We blame it on all sorts of things, right? But what we don't consider is that all of these things, our thinking, our emotions, our behavior, these are not causes of evil. They are byproducts of something else that happens. These evils are a byproduct. This behavior is a byproduct of something else. The question is, what is that something else? These things are not causes in themselves. The evil is not because of others. It's not because of my thinking. It's not because of my emotions. It's not because of my behavior. All these are a byproduct of something else. The question of byproduct of what? And the answer to that is that they are a byproduct of our level of consciousness. Consciousness is the law. You know, without your consciousness, well, you can conduct an experiment right now. You and I can conduct an experiment and say, you know, lose your consciousness and see what, what's left. Nothing. How you think, how you feel, all of that, it becomes redundant. It's irrelevant. Consciousness is the background against which all of these things can happen. So the level of our consciousness dictates the way we think. The level of our consciousness dictates the way we feel. The level of our consciousness dictates the way we behave. Think of consciousness almost like it's like a, 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 a you know, a level, a veranda, a balcony that you're standing on. The level of consciousness is the level of your balcony. It determines your view, your perspective. It determines what you see. It determines all of these things. Consciousness is the law. Without consciousness, it can be nothing. This is where that post that I made earlier today was about. So these evils are a byproduct of the level of our consciousness. The question is, is this level of consciousness intended? Or does something also happen that determines this level of consciousness? So is this level of consciousness itself a, a byproduct of something else that happens that causes that? And the answer for me, as I've observed in my life, and also with the work that I do, is that yes, the level of our consciousness is not a reflection of consciousness, it's a distortion of the real potential of consciousness. And the distortion happens early on. It's an event that all of us experience. That is birth, the trauma of birth. It's the trauma of birth that distorts our consciousness. It stunts our consciousness. Our first primary experience is pain. Pain stunts our consciousness, dislocates our awareness outside of ourselves and fixates it on the environment in the direction of pain. We won't go into it in detail right now. Our purpose is to determine what is living mastery and also what is holistic health. What does it look like in practice? So, but this primary event predisposes us to a particular quality of experience, which we're calling as a distortion of consciousness, which we are also saying is responsible for the evils in the world. The evils in the world are a byproduct of our quality or our level of consciousness. So if we want to treat those evils, we have to treat them at the level of consciousness. And if we want to stop this sort of um, recycling of the situation, we have to change our birthing practices so that our birthing practices become bliss births where the infant where the soul is incarnated into this world through the gateway of bliss 
so that it, it can imprint on its psyche that this life is benevolent and is supportive of my needs as opposed to pain which imprints on the consciousness that this world can hurt me and that it will this is where it begins violence begets violence and peace begets peace we are violent in the world because violence is in our makeup it's the first experience we had it's the first impression that we made of this life so this is very important so holistic health then return to this idea of you know how can we remedy this basically which can which, which can amount to holistic health and which can then translate practically into living mastery in holistic health as i described it earlier as physical emotional mental and spiritual so we must heal on all these levels physical health is the absence of disease emotional health is the absence of self-negation and self-doubt mental health is conscious use of mind as opposed to habitual and spiritual health is the knowing of myself according to my essential nature my essential spiritual nature not as a physical mental being but as part and parcel of consciousness life I am consciousness before I am a mind and before I am a body. My body doesn't know anything about my physicality. I need a mind in order to know about my physicality. And my mind does not know anything about its thinking reality. I need a consciousness in order to know about the thinking reality of my mind. So consciousness is king or queen. I am consciousness first. So this is where this whole idea of living wisdom also and living practice then can be applied. First, I must establish holistic health and then I must begin to practice that holistic health in these 12 categories of human life. So it's a very big topic, but we've just sort of dealt with it in short in order to you know, inspire uh, a conversation about it, hopefully, um, you know, but I do think that, that it needs to be talked about. And I certainly think that um, our birthing methods need to be uh, upgraded. And I absolutely believe that we need to be talking more about uh, birth than we do, in, in, than we are. We need to be, it needs to be the fundamental conversation. Because unless we change our birthing practices, and new souls can incarnate into this physical plane through the gateway of bliss imprinted with the goodness and the benevolence of life and we're going to continue being violent and we shouldn't expect anything less so this is my feeling about this and we really need to invite a conversation about this